So with the future of Google's Nexus brand hanging in the balance, they look to continue their young breed of Pixel devices by bringing it to the smartphone world with the rumored and, well, pretty much leaked Pixel and Pixel XL smartphones. While I'm really looking forward to what Google and their new smartphones have to offer, I think that I can speak for most of us Android enthusiasts when I say that if Google does in fact lay the Nexus brand to rest, I will really be missing that Nexus name and what Nexus products brought to the market. So let's go ahead and take a look back at where the Nexus started and how it evolved over the years. January 5, 2010. This was the day that Google announced the Nexus One, built by HTC and based pretty heavily on HTC's very own Desire smartphone. It retailed on Google's very own online store for $530. The Nexus One ran Android 2.1 Eclair, and it had a whopping 3.7 inch display. Yes, it also had a killer 5 megapixel camera, half a gig of RAM with a 1 gigahertz Snapdragon processor, and a 1400 milliamp hour battery. And who could forget that awesome multicolored light up trackball? Now, at the time, these specs were considered great and powerful. The screen was considered large, but unfortunately, in the end, the Nexus One didn't do too well as consumers weren't exactly used to shelling out cash for a phone with one online payment, not to mention the myriad of issues with carrier network coverage in the US, and the fact that the phone was pretty darn expensive. Google would end up shutting down their online store a few months after release and began selling the phone elsewhere. Unfortunately, didn't last long. Google definitely learned a lot with their first attempt as they came back for more with the Nexus S released December 16th, 2010. This time, Google went with Samsung to build their Nexus. Coming in at 529 unlocked, the Nexus S came loaded with Android 2.3 Gingerbread. It sported an even larger 4-inch Super AMOLED display, a 1 gigahertz single-core Hummingbird processor, a slightly larger 1500 milliamp hour battery, Battery, along with the same half gigabyte of RAM and 5 megapixel camera. Aside from its newer, fresher design, this time based off of Samsung's Galaxy S, there wasn't a whole lot that differentiated it from the Nexus One. But Google did do a lot better with the Nexus S, shipping a lot more units than they ever did with the Nexus One. And people were really starting to take notice of what Google was doing with their Nexus phones, building up the hype for their next attempt. Now Google looked to bring the heat with the Galaxy Nexus, this too being built by Samsung. Released November 17th, 2011, the 400 $100 Galaxy Nexus was based off of Samsung's Galaxy S2. It came packed with an even larger, slightly curved 4.7 inch 720p Super AMOLED display. It also came with a dual core 1.2 gigahertz Texas Instruments processor, finally a full gigabyte of RAM, and an improved 5 megapixel camera. Google had the table set. This would be their first Nexus to have an LTE radio. They had Samsung building their phone, who after having released the Galaxy S2 a few months prior, was having great success with their devices. And there was also the highly anticipated Android 4.0 ice cream sandwich update, which brought a very attractive UI overhaul and a bunch of new features. Everything was set up for huge success with this phone. But after issues with carriers like Sprint and Verizon and delayed device release dates, Google just said, okay, forget that, and went back to selling the phone themselves, putting it up for sale on the Play Store. There's also the fact that Samsung was actually going head to head with Apple in a patent infringement suit at the time. Kind of a messy situation, just bad timing. So although the Galaxy Nexus didn't exactly live up to the hype, it was just another stepping stone in Google's Nexus path. This again, Again, had people waiting anxiously for the next Nexus device and what it had to offer. Back to the drawing board. On November 13th, 2012, Google released the Nexus 4. Now this is where things really started to shape up. This time around, Google decided to drop Samsung in favor of LG. The Nexus 4 was heavily based off of LG's very own Optimus G, which was also released that year. The Nexus 4 shipped with either 8 or 16 gigabytes of storage and a very low price point of $299 and $349 respectively. In terms of specs, the Nexus 4 came loaded with a 4. 7 inch 720p IPS plus display, a much nicer 8 megapixel camera, the stronger and faster quad core Snapdragon S4 Pro processor, 2 gigabytes of RAM, and a beefier 2100 milliamp hour battery. It had support for wireless charging and it shipped with Android 4.2 Jelly Bean. Google also decided it'd be a good idea to sell the Nexus 4 on both the Play Store and through T Mobile. Google nailed it with the Nexus 4 with the high end specs, much nicer, more premium hardware, this time including glass on the back, a bunch of awesome new features in Android 4.2, and of course, course, that crazy low price tag. Although it did lack LTE, everything else combined made the Nexus 4 a home run as it sold by the millions. This definitely jump-started the hype train for what was to come. Enter the Nexus 5. Released October 31st, 2013, Google decided to stick with LG on this one. Google looked to continue the trend of high-end specs for a low price like they did with the Nexus 4. The Nexus 5 only cost $349 for the 16GB model and $399 for the 32GB model. Somewhat based off of LG's G2, the Nexus 5 sported a larger 
larger 5 inch 1080p IPS display, an 8 megapixel camera, the Snapdragon 800 processor with 2 gigabytes of RAM, a larger 2300 milliamp hour battery, and Android 4.4 KitKat, which by the way was one of the best iterations of Android ever. It was yet another home run for Google as their Nexus 5 was touted as the best phone out there for the price. After back to back wins with the 4 and the 5, more and more general consumers began seeing the Nexus as a worthy competitor for their next phone. And if things couldn't possibly get any better, the Nexus 5 had LTE while the Nexus 4 did not. The Nexus was no longer just a device for the nerds, the tinkerers, and the developers. It was a phone for the masses. The Nexus 5 was a beast of a phone, and we had no idea what was on the horizon. What was on said horizon was a complete curveball thrown at us by Google with the Nexus 6 released in November 2014. You want to talk about a beast of a phone? Well, this was it. This time around, the Nexus would be made by Motorola, taking pretty much all of its design language from the Moto X. It really was just a giant Moto X with Nexus written on the back. The Nexus 6 came with a humongous 6-inch Quad HD AMOLED display, the Snapdragon 805 processor with 3GB of RAM, a 13-megapixel camera, and a rather large, yet fitting, 3220 milliamp hour battery. It also boasted front-facing speakers, along with Google's latest Android 5.0 Lollipop update and the welcome UI overhaul known as material design. Now that curveball that I mentioned not only came in the form of an unexpected screen size jump, it also came in the form of price. The two previous Nexus phones carried the high-end specs for a low price banner with pride. It was something that helped them stand out among the crowded world of Android smartphones, and it appealed to millions of buyers everywhere. But with those lower price tags, the devices themselves had to take hits as far as specifications go to make up for that cost. With the Nexus 6, Google sort of dropped that belief as they packed its newest phone with as much as they possibly could with no sacrifices whatsoever. The Nexus 6 retailed for $649 for the 32GB model and $699 for the 64GB model. Yeah, this thing was wasn't cheap. While the Nexus 6 was a very solid phone, it kind of left new Nexus followers confused with Google's new premium specs and higher pricing belief. Now this is where our current Nexus smartphones come into play. In September 2015, Google surprised everyone with two Nexus smartphones as opposed to just one. That was a first. Instead of releasing one smartphone to please everybody, they released two so that consumers would have a choice. This was a super smart move on their part. Starting with the Nexus 5X, Google partnered with their old friend LG once again to make this device. And as you can probably guess, this was a direct nod to the LG Nexus 5 from two years before. The 5X had a slightly larger 5.2 inch 1080p IPS display, the Snapdragon 808 processor, and two gigabytes of RAM. This was the cheaper of the two devices, directed towards those who needed high-end specs but for less money. Now, the Nexus 6P, on the other hand, was the main flagship of that year. We're talking top-of-the-line everything, both inside and out, as the P in 6P actually stood for premium. Google continued to surprise us all with their partnership with Chinese manufacturer Huawei for this new device. The Nexus 6P had it all. It came with a gorgeous 5.7-inch Quad HD AMOLED display, the Snapdragon 810 chip with 3GB of RAM, dual front-facing speakers, and a rather large 3,400 450 milliamp hour battery. The 6P was the Nexus device we'd all been waiting for. Finally, a Nexus that was good at everything. Ever since the Nexus phone was born, there had always been something missing, whether it be the build quality, the battery life, and especially the camera performance. The 6P had good battery life, great build quality, and a killer camera, which to this day pushes out fantastic quality considering today's standards. But the great thing about these two new Nexus phones was that although they had their differences in price and build quality, they shared fingerprint readers on the back. They both shipped with Android 6.0, they both sported the newer USB Type-C charging port, and they even had the same exact 12 megapixel main camera. The 5X retailed for a pretty fair $379, while the 6P went for $499, which to be honest was extremely fair, seeing as how the Nexus 6 went for $150 more than that. So if this is indeed the last set of Nexus branded smartphones we see, I think it's safe to say they went out with a bang. Both phones were reasonably priced, they both packed great specs which to this day are still considered contenders for consumer pockets, especially with their prices dropping pretty pretty heavily, and they both continue to represent what Nexus devices were really all about. And of course, we do have to give an honorable mention to the other Nexus devices that were released throughout the years. The Nexus 7 tablets, the Nexus 10, the Nexus 9, and well, the Nexus Q, but we all know that didn't last long. So although the Nexus isn't necessarily dead, we can't help but think about that possibility. Either way, we say hello to the new generation of smartphones from Google, 
the Pixel. In the event we never see another Nexus smartphone, the name Pixel is equally if not more of an awesome sounding name and a fitting one at that. What's great about this whole situation is that we'll still be getting a high quality phones straight from Google with pure stock Android. But besides the awesome Nexus name we've come to love, we'll be losing some of what Nexus devices really meant to us. It looks like Google will be joining the likes of Samsung, HTC, Apple, and others with top of the line everything, both specs and price. They'll more than likely market this phone like they never had with any previous phone and well, can we really blame them for that? We should be getting all of our answers come October 4th, where the Pixel phones will be officially unveiled. We may see Google address this in a way none of us expected at their event. It'll be extremely interesting to see where Google goes with this. So what do you guys think? Do you like the direction that Google is going with their next smartphones? Go ahead and let us know by dropping a comment down below. We'd love to hear your feedback. Well, that does it for the video. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, feel free to hit that like button, subscribe to the Android Police channel if you haven't already. That does it for me. I'll talk to you guys later and thanks for watching.